Margot uh, Look, I would first of all uh, like to welcome the Minister and welcome this debate on what is a very important uh, issue. And I think in this debate on direct provision, indeed on the whole wider area of immigration, there, there are two extremes in the debate. Uh, one extreme uh, is the view that there should be no immigration, no inflow of people, either immigrant workers or asylum seekers, uh, into the state. The other view is that there should be complete freedom of, of movement, uh, unfettered and unhindered uh, by uh, national borders. Both views are extreme, uh, both views are frankly ludicrous. Uh, firstly, it is the state's sovereign right to define its borders and regulate movement into the state. Uh, secondly, our membership of the European Union uh, carries with it uh, a core freedom, the freedom of movement of people uh, throughout uh, the Union. Uh, thirdly, Ireland doesn't exist in a vacuum. Uh, it has an economy that has vacancies uh, that can sometimes only be filled by persons from abroad who are accommodated uh, by the employment uh, permits legislation. Uh, these jobs, they're, they're all different types of jobs, some from manual jobs to highly specialised roles, but all are important uh, nonetheless for the economy. Uh, fourthly, in a world which unfortunately is increasingly unstable, uh, there is a basic uh, you know, human rights and human rights violations on a horrendous scale. We have a duty and an obligation to assist people uh, who seek help. Uh, these points are equally valid and uh, impact on the direct provision system. Uh, to be clear, there will always be, without exception, I believe, a need for a system uh, to process and address unplanned arrivals uh, into the state that is in indisputable. However, to be equally clear, the current system of direct provision is beset with problems, uh, is not adequate for many of the people uh, within it. I have raised reform of this, like uh, I have others, uh, on, on several occasions, in, in May 2011, November 2011, October 2012, December 2013, February 2014, most recently in June, and other times as well. And some of the points that I've raised include uh, permitting the, the Ombudsman to examine complaints or issues from the residents, uh, the plans of ministers uh, to reform the system, and the efforts to reduce, by as much as possible, the amount of time spent uh, within the system. Uh, thankfully, the numbers in the system are, uh, have been falling, but it remains a fact, and quite an unsettling one, that some people have been spent years within the direct provision system. Families have and are being reared in single rooms. Uh, single people are having to share rooms with, with persons of a completely different culture, with no common language in some, many cases. And this is unacceptable. The appeal system in the area of immigration is also a problem. Uh, it needs to be streamlined and made more straightforward. But the decisions of the various adjudicating bodies also need uh, to be respected. We can't have a system of endless appeals. The state has the right, at the end of the day, to adjudicate uh, on behalf of, of, of citizens. Uh, since the restatement of government priorities, the Minister for Justice, Francis Fitzgerald, and the Minister of State, Eon O'Riordan, have made several important commitments which I enthusiastically welcome. Uh, and these include, as has been stated, the setting up of the establishment of a working group, uh, which the Minister has point, pointed out this evening, uh, to report to the Government on the improvements within the protection system, including to direct provision, and also to reduce the length of time that people are waiting within the system. And, you know, I also welcome the, the, the fact that the roundtable talks have convinced that these will set the terms of reference uh, for the working group. And, um, NGOs outlined a number of areas that they have concerns about, including the, the allowance for direct provision, the exceptional needs payment, the uh, limitations of the length of time spent, uh, the inspections and complaints procedure, uh, educational issues, and the dignity of people within the direct provision uh, system. It is worth noting that you know, numbers have been greatly reduced, but they are still too high. There's still uh, over nearly 4,500 people within the system, although the number of new applicants uh, have fallen greatly from over 2,000 in the year 2009 to 404 uh, now, but again, still too high. Um, and again, you know, the overwhelming majority of people have, you know, who are there for a number of years are there because they have this per protracted legal procedure um, to, to, that they have to, ex to exhaust before a decision is made. So I, I would welcome any commitment to reduce the time. Uh, obviously the system is not perfect. Uh, it has prevented homelessness in one case, and unfortunately as a state we have many other challenges outside of the deep, direct provision system, including homelessness, uh, including social housing shortages, uh, in, including problems with rental accommodation. So there's a, there's, a, there's a larger issue here that has to be looked at. And Sweden is a country that's often looked at as being very liberal in relation to the whole of asylum areas, but they have their own challenges. It was a big issue in the recent elections that they had. And, you know, they have required almost a doubling of the budget over the next four years to try and deal with the situation. 
uh, wh where they're handling uh, many refugees uh, from countries like Syria uh, and Somalia. Uh, and they have similar problems. So uh, I, I wish the minister well. I commend him on what he's done so far. And I commend the government on their work so far. And I certainly hope that a solution can be found to, to in the indignity of people you. having to spend years whilst their applications are being processed. Thank you, Deputy.